Sugar plays an imperative role in Filipino cuisine. Its sweetness lands not only in our kakanins, but it has also found itself in the heart of some of our dishes. The Philippines has a robust sugarcane industry. It's one of the original major crops of the Austronesian people, so it's said to have either arrived from Taiwan or from the Celebes in the 22nd century before Christ. We probably used more unrefined versions of sugar like pacascas from the Buri palm tree or turbinado, muscovado, or molasses for most of our cooking. Unfortunately, as large mills took over the sugar production, the hybrid high-yielding sugarcane and refined sugar overpowered the humble muscovado traditionally made by small farmers from heirloom sugarcane. Recently though, there has been lots of issues surrounding our sugar industry and then the need to import it. There's a spark of hope though, as some communities in the Philippines hang on to these time-honored traditions, including the town of Magallanes in Cavite, who until today make muscovado in the most traditional way. Cavite played a major role in the colonial galleon trade and sugar became one of our main export commodities. Can supporting these unsung makers help save this heirloom ingredient from a long period of decline and preserve the heritage behind it? This is the artisanal muscovado sugar of Magallanes. Dominga Bello and her husband have been making muscovado for 45 years. Because of her age, Dominga hires jornals or workers to help her continue the tradition. With their sharp machetes, the jornal makes his way to the sugarcane field. It takes one year to grow the sugarcane, making every season valuable to the people of Magallanes. A jornal fetches the carabao and loads the sugar cane on its sled. After four rounds, the carabao is attached to the tarapiche. The tarapiche is a carabao run mechanism that squeezes the puyao. Serving the community for 127 years, the tarapiche is deemed one of the heroes of this long standing method of making sugar. A tank sits beside the tarapiche waiting to collect the juice, while a hose is attached to the container that delivers it to the giant cauldrons. The squeezed sugar canes are utilized to feed the fire. As it turns to ashes, they are also used as fertilizer. The cauldrons are filled with the sugar cane juice. The jornals light a fire. As it cooks, the workers carefully remove the halagap, or impurities. The process is called papasululukayan. Um. 
While waiting for the juice of the heirloom sugarcane to crystallize, the Jornados take a canful. This is Bina Ok, a sweet and viscous bread filling usually eaten with a cup of hot coffee. Once it reaches the desired thickness, the juices are combined in one cauldron. A coconut oil made by Dominga will be added to ensure the silkiness of the mixture. Dominga uses six coconuts to make one bottle of oil. She makes it a month before the harvesting season. She grates the copra. adds water, and kneads the insides of the coconut. She then squeezes and strains the resulting coconut milk, which she then cooks and reduces until it turns to oil. After four hours, the drizzle of the thickened sugarcane juice is rolled and sunk into the water. This determines its readiness. If it floats, the jornadas consider it pulot, the mother liquor, and they slowly reduce the fire. If it sinks, it needs more time. Once thick enough, the pulot is transferred to the tray. The minga fondly gets strips of the viscous sugarcane juice and stretches it. Her grandchildren love watching her roll it until it becomes a candy called binatak. The jornals start to rake the pulut. They do this repeatedly, patiently waiting until it dries out. This step takes almost an hour of crushing and smoothening the muscovado until it becomes the powdery, unrefined sugar we have come to love. Today, there's a promising opportunity for Philippine Muscovado. With the rising demand for healthy and organic food and a growing appreciation for artisans, the future of Magallanes and small producers like Dominga may just have a sweet aftertaste.